Good morning, and I'm really delighted to welcome you all to this Mock Council of the European Union 2009 event. Uh, this is the second year that it's been running, and it's the second year that I've had the privilege to chair it. My name is Sandy Mewis. Um, I'm the chair of the European and External Affairs Committee, um, and I'm delighted to welcome our invited guest, Jane Hutt, who's the Minister for Children, Education, Lifelong Learning and Skills, and Andy Klom who is head of the European Commission office in Wales. I'm now going to hand over to Jane Hutt, the minister, who's going to say a few words. Um, Borada, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Sandy, for inviting me to speak at this very uh, prodigious event. And thank you for organising a second uh, mock council uh, of the European Union, because I think... Uh, the feedback I had indeed from the First Minister as well, who attended the one last year, was that it had been a, a very important event, a very important for, event for us in the uh, Assembly and in very important feedback for us in government. So, Morada, Gideon, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. To the well, good morning once again, Borada, Buenos dias. Um, working for the European Commission, is something I've been doing for the past 17 years. And uh, based on that experience, I wanted to make a few comments of uh, motivation, inspiration for you this morning at this opening of the, uh, the second Mock EU Council here in Wales, uh, explaining, first of all, actually what the European Commission does. Because uh, amongst the 28 teams that are sitting here today, there's only one team that is looking out for the common European interest, as we say it. All the rest of you are defending your national interest, whether you're Greece or Malta or Finland or, or Denmark. You're sticking up for your country, your Danish herrings or your Finnish Nokias, but you're not defending the European interest. And the European Commission is one of the EU institutions separate from this council and separate from the European Parliament that actually has as its mandate to represent and de defend the common European interest. So why did Belgium adopt the euro currency? Firstly, it makes economic and political sense. What is the point in having different currencies across Europe where having one equal currency would stabilise the economic situation? We are the 15th largest trading nation, therefore it made sense to join the euro. However, I do think it's important to state that we strongly support an open economy, but, today in financial, but in today's financial climate, I think it's wise to consider joining the euro. Secondly, it makes travelling easier, having one th currency throughout Europe. One of the major reasons why some tourists don't visit parts of Europe is because of the different currencies. I believe that getting other EU states to adopt the euro would improve the economic situation in the travel industry. So, members of council, what have I told you? I propose the fact that it makes polit political and economic sense to adopt the euro, and secondly, I stated that it would make travelling a lot easier throughout Europe. I leave you to consider these arguments. Ireland. In response to Lithuania, the Republic is merely exploring different avenues, and I would re reject the, and condemn their ridiculous close-mindedness. Um, we are hearing a lot of harsh words from some of our European friends, and I would warn them that it is this kind of bullying which will, in the long term, damage the euro and turn people off of it. We aspire to see the euro as the currency of Europe, and we remain in support of it. Well, speaking again for Denmark, I would like to state to Lithuania that basing their hopes on a bet which may or may not work, depending on whether the euro, euro may collapse or may not collapse, is not incredibly wise at this point in time, especially with the economic crisis and the uh, suddenness in which it came. I'd also like to speak out for Sweden, since it seems that many people are speaking against them. The punishment proposed by Lithuania for Sweden is anti-EU, on the basis that we are a peaceful and democratic society and having punishment may start something which we do not want to go into. This is Lithuania, sorry. Um, just in response to Denmark and Slovenia, I'd just like to distance ourselves from the suggestion that we would do this as a social experiment. I just wanted to throw it in there to see how everybody felt about it. Um, uh, in response to Ireland's suggestion of bullying you into the euro, I feel this is quite a childish view to have taken. And aren't you in the Euro anyway? Yeah, right, OK. Uh, 
Every member state must decide for itself what issues to put to its voters. Germany does not want to have referenda on this or anything else. Further, Germany does not have national referenda and we believe that this is a good thing. Let me explain. If every constitutional and institutional change went to referenda, then change would be impossibly slow. Any kind of development would be crippled and progress would be weighed down in another layer of unnecessary bureaucracy forcing the EU into a position of inefficiency and stagnation. We would to all intensive purposes become idle. Let me add this. Not only could we not afford to remain idle, we do not want to remain idle because Europe is facing a world changing at a breathtaking pace due to trading powers like China and India. The treaty has more, de more democratic voting procedures. Majority decisions will now be the rule rather than requiring unanimous decisions. This will help us overcome gridlock. Therefore, Germany are against the motion. Danke. Thank you. Uh, Malta here. Uh, I'd like to provide a sort of a bit more background, if I may, uh, into a few of the points, uh, well, uh, one major point that I've seen explored very briefly in the motions, uh, the um, statements of initial position just then, uh, that is that the population of a country on the whole do not often fully understand what they're actually voting for. Um, often, it's not often perhaps their fault, but questions can be poorly worded by the government so people can't get, the, can't get fully understand what, what they're being asked to vote for. Uh, not only can this result in people not understanding what they're voting for, which I keep saying, but uh, may cause them to either vote incorrectly or completely um, avoid voting at all. There's an example from um, the USA, which has found that the average voter could not understand voting, uh, could not understand the wording of a question, would not often vote at all. Maybe that's uh, a bit of a point about the uh, average US citizen, but perhaps it, it can be... Um, <laughs> It can be applied elsewhere in the world as well. Um, frankly, I think it's quite patronising that you claim that um, the people of Malta, let alone the e EU, would um, be unable to comprehend legislation passed by the EU. Um, of course, people will only have an opinion and vote if they um, understand the issue. And um, if your people do not understand this, then um, what they would be voting for, then maybe you should do a better job of ed educating your people or the wording of your legislation. Thank you. Sorry.